Hi, I'm Sarah Sabur. My presentation today is about differentiable volumetric rendering by Michael Nimmer and colleagues. In this work, uh, we target generating a full 3D model without any 3D supervision, which means that during training, they only require 2D images plus camera intrinsics and object masks, so no 3D supervision. And they are able to learn implicit functions to model the 3D surface and the 3D texture of the object. So you can render it from any viewpoint from any camera angle. Having a 3D model is crucial for many tasks that require interaction like aerobotics and autonomous driving. So that's the main motivation of why do we want to learn a full 3D model. And uh, there are various methods for doing 3D modeling, including point clouds, walk cells, and mesh. The main motivation for focusing on implicit representation is that they are able to render at any uh, resolution with a fixed memory footprint, and it also have many benefits over point clouds and meshes, including not relying on templates, not having lossy renderings, etc. And uh, the reason they are looking at unsupervised implicit mod 3D modeling is that in real world scenarios, you cannot rely on having 3D supervision. So in order to be able to scale to larger and more complex realistic data sets, uh, you need to uh, work, be able to learn unsupervised. Uh, so why? This is hard and no one has done unsupervised 3D modeling with implicit representations. The answer is that the combination of implicit representations and unsupervised learning is especially challenging. Uh, the main reason being unsupervised learning means that you only have 2D RGB images, which means that you can only train on the RGB images so you have to render back from your model to the RGB images. Therefore, you require gradient toward, through your uh, rendering process. And uh, gradient of implicit functions are uh, have traditionally have been either very costly or uh, only calculate in, in, a, in an estimated approximate way. Furthermore, traditionally in 3D modeling, uh, researchers only model uh, 3D surfaces, uh, but if you want to learn unsupervised, you, you have to use as much information as possible. So uh, ignoring texture is not a good idea. There, uh, therefore, their, uh, their contribution in this work addresses these two presented challenges. So they derive an analytical formulation for the gradient of surface rendering to an implicit function. And uh, they also propose training on the texture and color of the surface directly. As a result, they were able to achieve state-of-the-art on unsupervised 3D modeling on both ShapeNet and a more complex data set of DTU. In order to understand the contributions of this paper better, let's take a look at what an implicit function is. An implicit function is a function from a 3D coordinate, R3, and the, co and the conditioning representation uh, here denoted by z to an scalar between 0 and 1. The function f is parameterized by a set of variables like theta, and uh, the output is, the is to indicate the occupancy probability. The goal is to learn these parameters uh, theta. In this line of work, we assume a threshold tau for the surface. So f for the points that are on surface, f theta of p is equal to tau. Therefore, finding the surface resolves into finding the root of a parametric equation. 
So what sort of functions are we talking about, f tetas? In this work, uh, they, they use an architecture with residual blocks uh, to parameterize f. Uh, they have five residual blocks. At the start of each block, the conditioning representation z, which is based on the input image, is concatenated. And the input is just a 3D vector of the point coordinates we are querying. Uh, the last head has four dimensions, one dimension for the occupancy probability of F theta, and three dimensions for the color at that point. So now the question is, with the surface function F theta, how can we find the surface and render an image to have a full system? As we said before, the surface happens at the root of function f theta equals tau. A popular method for finding this root is to first sample endpoints along a camera array at pixel position u. Here, others use equidistant initial candidates. Um, let's call these points p1 to pn. And then uh, we calculate the occupancy probability of these points in parallel by passing them through our implicit function f, as shown here. Then we find the two closest points around tau. So for example, for a tau of half, uh, 0.5, uh, pj and pj plus 1 that are uh, returning 0 0.45 and 0. 55 are the closest ones. And uh, after, so how do we get these uh, two points? By performing an argmin operation. This is a red flag because argmin is not readily backpropagatable. So uh, take note of this argmin function. So after we found the two closest points to tau, then uh, for, to find the exact root, we uh, use an iterative algorithm called second method to find the root. Um, so the second method requires two initial guesses, and we provide those, and it returns uh, the exact root for f theta equals tau. Because in order to trivially backpropagate uh, through this, uh, it, second method, we would need to unroll it. Uh, it would be really costly. So this is another red flag. Uh, so we have two red flags, the argmin and the iterative method. But at the end, we find the root point, or in other terms, the surface depth for pixel u. Now, the full texture rendering algorithm is as follows. So far, we have passed the image through an encoder to get a conditioning representation z. Also for a pixel position and camera position, we have figured out the surface depth d using the implicit occupancy function. Now we pass the 3D surface point through the sec uh, texture implicit function and get the RGB value for that pixel. So we have a full cycle from image to image. Given the camera matrix for the input image, we can then train the model to optimize the loss between the predicted image and input image. So what's the tricky part here? The gradient. We need to back propagate from the rendering all the way back toward the input image. The gradient from predicted image to the predicted depth is straightforward. The issue is with the ray tracing. Remember, it had the argmin and iterative procedure. So what we are looking for is the gradient of depth d with respect to the model parameters theta. So the main observation is that we only need to calculate the gradient at surface points. Fortunately, for these points, we have the criteria that they are roots of f. So if we take the gradient uh, from both sides of these equations, f theta of p equals tau, since the right side is constant, it would become zero. Now, with a little application of chain rule, we get an equation in the bottom which involves our desired gradient of depth with respect to theta. 
Therefore, we can arrive at an analytical derivation uh, for these three key gradients as shown here. Uh, so that's about it. We now have a full model from image to image that we can back propagate all the way through. And we found an analytical gradient uh, to skip the iteration and argmin operations. The main contributions in this work in general is the analytical gradient and the texture module. The results are surprisingly good for an unsupervised model. Uh, here, they are comparing their models, surface and texture to two previous methods, uh, soft rasterizer and pixel to mesh. Uh, they get really good results, especially for this desk in the middle with disconnected surfaces. In terms of quantitative comparison, they also get best unsupervised chamfer distance on shape net uh, of 2 .0 0.239, uh, which is very close to supervised results of 0.21. They also test their model on the more complex data set of D2 and uh, compare their method against previous mesh-based methods. Uh, mesh-based methods require a three minute threshold for rendering, and as you can see, they get better quality than the two trimmings of both five and seven of the cold map algorithm, especially seven. This uh, trimming threshold is tricky. As you can see, a larger trimming of seven is visually worse, but if you look at the numbers, a uh, uh, trimming of seven gives you the best chamfer distance for the mesh-based methods. Uh, and their method uh, based on implicit function is comparable to the trimming of seven and better than uh, the other lower trim trimmings. Uh, in terms of ablation, uh, they uh, study the effect of their surface normalization and uh, in practice they use a surface normalization of 0.1 but as you can see their results are decent even without a surface normalization. Uh, they also ablation uh, how much they would uh, benefit if they get a supervised depth signal and uh, add a loss on the depth estimation as well. Um, the bottom two rows are with only RGB loss or with both RGB and depth loss. Personally, they both B and C look the same to me, so I, I would say they have successfully handled the depth estimation. Uh, a hyperparameter that makes the most difference is number of samples, especially for capturing sharp edges of narrow parts, as you can see here, with few samples, you it will fail. So overall, the results are good, uh, and they get the state of the art on two benchmarks. Uh, but these data sets are still far from real world complexities, like having multiple objects, background, etc. Also, they require camera intrinsics, which limits the compatibility of this method with available data sets. Uh, and finally, it seems that their model fails on capturing sharp details like narrow legs of furniture. Uh, probably it can be mitigated by smarter sampling or ray tracing priors. To recap, what we discussed, this paper is significant, is a significant step toward unsupervised learning of 3D models. And um, they provide an analytical derivation of ray tracing gradient which can potentially be useful in other tasks too. So the, both their contributions uh, can be uh, applied to other tasks. And for these specific tasks, there are several things that can be improved, but they are a, a great step with state-of-the-art results. Thank you.